The first presentation in this session is from Asian Heart Institute, Institute. Mumbai, you. being presented by Dr. Jaldish Kulkarni. Dr. Kulkarni, please. A very special welcome to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, at the outset, this is my first uh, visit to this last year. I couldn't make it because it's everything. I'm extremely thankful to Dr. Bhandari and Vertical Group on two counts. One is giving at, I'm already 60. Given access. Sir, you should say I'm only 60. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for giving an access to a non-institutional person at that point of time for a robotic surgery, me and my friend Dr. Uh, uh, Srinivas. So, till now we have heard about institutions. What we are going to, I'm going to show you is a group who post retirement can develop a robotic system, uh, procedures Excellent. and can have more time. This uh, the robot was installed uh, somewhere in August 2011 at Asian Heart, uh, Dr. Panda's clinic. And uh, Dr. Bandari was the one who asked us to participate there. Now, this is in a sort of a, a place where beyond cardiac surgery, there are some places, uh, some surgeries being done with general surgery or something. But this is mainly a cardiac surgery initiative. Now, what do we do? Myself and Dr. Srinivas, there were two more other people, but they unfortunately they couldn't do it. So we have joined as a group with Dr. Mangesh Patil is an assistant to us. Uh, first robotic surgery was done in August 2011 with a mentor, Dr. Kaul. But ultimately, actually, we got trained somewhere in October. We started doing procedures uh, December 2011. So we had almost two years now. Number of procedures are, uh, now we have gone about, this is the data of December 2013. 225, and a maximum number of cases have been, we've reached now nearing 200 radical prostate. Now, why I'm saying this is, uh, when you're doing in a situation where it's not an institution, the infra infrastructure is not there beyond, you know, beyond certain issues, it is very difficult to adjust our, at our stage also. To, and these are all private patients. So to take up these major procedures, not. So level one, we decided to take up only radical prostatectomy. We did some nephrectomies. Partial nephrectomy, I must honestly say, we haven't done many. Cystectomies, we tried some. But the problem was, again, as I said, the cost of the whole thing. These all the standard thing which you know, preoperative management. We had no conversion at all, so many cases. The only one problem which we faced during a radical nephrectomy, when we were doing a left radical nephrectomy, as we were trying to get to the artery, we got to the right renal artery, that we realized this. And that happens, there's a video there. I can show you sometime later, not now. But that, instead of looking at left renal artery, we went to the right renal artery. Almost we were ligated, but we realized something is not right. And then, of course, we could avoid that. But not conversion again. 170 data, I think we have. Uh, again, somebody rightly said that uh, most of the PSAs are more than 20. So we are getting a little low regionally advanced. And, we started with, uh, and at, at this point, I must tell you that uh, we are really not looking at nurse pairing business. Because let's do the margins. Adequate margins first, so we've not done too many of a nurse pairing. Hospital stay is only three days. There is three days because patients' package is given for three days. Nobody stays. Luckily, nobody, serve, nobody required to stay more. Complications, as you can see, eight patients did have complications, osteitis pubis, SUI, and other things. All these monitorings have been done clearly, as you said. Average duration of hospital is absolutely three days. No question about that. The blood loss overall, I'm, we are analyzing the data, which is, we are now reaching 200 radical prostatectomies. We should be in a position to give you one paper shortly. Another group of patients is a post-TURP, either to, uh, you know, formal TURP or HOLEP. That's another. We have done very well. There's no problem at all. Three modifications we performed. Use of gauze, especially when you're doing a, a retroprostatic dissection. After you cut the denominous fascia, uh, we felt that if you put a just gauze dissection, you can really get the plane very well. And finger rectum is rectum because that's one area where we thought this would be a good idea. Of course, I have not seen the mentors doing that. But finger in rectum can help us, especially at the urethroprostatic junction. And of course, Trendelenburg position. Now, we don't give full Trendelenburg position. We give something like, um, you know, if you have three types, three grades of thing, you do it only one or two. So that, you know, problem of that, you know, uh, O2, uh, CO2 becomes uh, difficult, no, no problem at all. In fact, uh, with Trendelenburg 1, you have no problem with um, 
uh, uh, pneumopyritin, not tolerated. So that's one modification we done. I think this is what, just to say that the age of, after the age of 60, we can still be doing robotic surgery. I do not know how far we can go forward, but this is the what we have reached at this point of time. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Age is no bar. Yeah, it should only, you should have a desire to learn. I don't think age comes anywhere in that process. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.